Welcome to Punit's Astrology. I am wearing a black sunglass in the middle of a room. Don't you think this is weird? I don't even need this sunglass. There is no sunlight. You know, why am I wearing this sunglass? I am having a doubt on why I am doing this. Well, actually I don't even know. But it just feels good to have this sunglass. But do I really need this? I don't think so. This is the traits of Rahu. Rahu makes you do things which you don't even know why in the first place you're doing it. Rahu makes you believe in things which doesn't exist. Rahu is an illusion. Rahu is a kind of a player which plays with your mind, which plays with the house in which Rahu sits, creates an illusion out of it and then explodes the illusion. You then tend to wear this black sunglass of Rahu over your eyes and then think that you are doing correct, but you may not. You just need to understand the difference between what is correct and what is not correct. Rahu doesn't allow you to understand that. And that is why, my friends, Rahu is the most malefic planet in astrology. Today we will discuss more on this mysterious planet called Rahu. Guys, this is Rahu video, so I should not let go of my Rahu eyesight. Now, what is Rahu? Rahu is the north node of the moon's shadow. Ketu is the south node. Rahu and Ketu forms the karmic axis in the Kundli and uh, other planets revolve on the either sides of the Rahu-Ketu axis. Rahu, as per Bhrigu and Parashara, Rahu is not a solid planet. Rahu is a shadow. It does not have an existence. Remember my friends, Rahu doesn't exist. Rahu is an illusion. Still, this illusion plays a vital role in determining the obsession, the desire and the emotions in human's life. Rahu is obsession. Rahu is a desire to control everything. Rahu is the power of the underground. Rahu is a negative as well as positive power. Surprise, huh? One secret of astrology. In astrology, there is nothing called absolute malefic or absolute benefic. Every planet is malefic in some ways and a benefic in some ways. There is nothing black or white in astrology. Everything is grey and it's all different shades of grey. Now, depending upon whether the grey is darker or the grey is lighter, one can understand that whether the planetary effects in the Dasha or Mahadasha or in a general way during the Gochir transits will provide good benefits or it will provide bad results. Rahu and Ketu are 180 degree apart. Rahu is the head, only the head. Ketu is the body. Now since Rahu is the head, wherever Rahu will sit, will give all his thoughts and emotions to that particular house and will make the person obsessed to that house. For example, if Rahu sits in Lagna, the person gets obsessed by himself. He gets confused. If, the Ra if Rahu is sitting in fifth house, the person has huge connection with people. The person fears a lot. And he doesn't even know because Rahu is unknown fear. Rahu is fear from things which you don't even know. Rahu inculcates a typical fear in human being which we all try to fight to get rid of. For example, Rahu can may cause you a fear of lightning or Rahu can inculcate a fear of water. So any fear is, is, is seen through the positions of Rahu in the horoscope. Rahu, if it is good, in its dasha or mahadasha will give you great benefits. It will give you all sorts of material pleasure. It will, it will provide you all wealth. It will, it will give, put you in a high position. But if it is bad, then there can be negative effects of Rahu depending upon the position of other planets in astrology. Now I see that there are many people whose Rahu and Ketu are in conjunction with other planets. This is a very common scenario like right now there are five planets in conjunct 
currently Rahu is in Leo, Jupiter is in Leo, Jupiter will move out to Leo, or uh, move out from Leo uh, to Virgo on 11th of August this year. Now that's a very good movement. And uh, <coughs> Rahu's placement in a particular house in conjunction with another planet and the degree of conjunction of the two planets makes it very vital to understand what kind of an obsession that person will have. Now, for example, Rahu is in conjunction with Moon and the degree of difference is, say, 5 degrees. Now, such person becomes emotionally obsessive towards small things. He will be extremely sensitive. His emotions will explode. To understand this, we, we let us suppose that there is a head, means there is a CPU but it doesn't have a body to function with. Rahu sits with a planet and uses the body of that planet, but the mind is always Rahu's. Rahu dominates. Rahu is dominating in nature. So if the person's moon is sitting with Rahu and moon is not good or under not good aspects or the dispositor of the house in which Rahu and moon is sitting is not in a good position, then in such cases the person might go in depression the person can think of negative thought. It makes a person pessimistic. He will be extremely sensitive to things which, which no one even bothers about. But if it is in a good position, that the same person can bring out ways to emotion, emotionally nourish other people. Such person becomes psychiatrist because they can easily understand the emotion of other masses. So Rahu behaves in a very different way. Rahu is gas. It is, it is, it doesn't, it is just dhuma. It has no existence. Now let us suppose that Rahu is in conjunction with Sun. So what this Rahu will do, this combination will do, this combination will make you always be obsessed towards your own self-esteem. You will be having disputes with your senior leadership, with the government agents, because Sun represents government. This shows that there will be uh, issues with your father because sun represents father. Sun and Rahu combination is solar eclipse. Sun and moon, Rahu and moon combination is moon, lunar eclipse. If Rahu and Jupiter is sitting together, this is called Guru Chandal Yoga. These are all the different yogas that Rahu makes. If all planets are on the one side of the axis of Rahu and Ketu and no other planet is on the other side, then that is called Kal Sarp Dosh. So all these doshas, doshas are formed through Rahu and Ketu. One thing is that uh, since Rahu is just an illusion, it, it actually doesn't exist. So we must understand that how Rahu works. How can uh, a Gyan work? It first of all instills a particular thought or a particular idea in your mind. Now that thought or that idea will come from the position from where Rahu is sitting. So if it is in fifth house, it is an obsession towards public speaking, obsession towards mass, creativity, towards children. If it is in the seventh house, then it is an obsession for business, for other people, for legal partnership with wife. And if it is in ninth house, it is an obsession with spirituality. In eighth house, it is an obsession with occult. In the 4th house, it is an obsession towards buying property because 4th house represents property, your home. It is an obsession towards home or motherland. That idea which Rahu instills becomes an obsession because it grows slowly and slowly and slowly. That idea is taken from the position of the Rahu on, along with the planets in which, uh, with which Rahu is sitting. And Rahu takes the energy of that planet, expands it indefinitely in such a way that it explodes instantly. So, in, in that way, it's like a nuclear explosion. You cannot really, literally control it. So, it fills our mind with that particular idea and we harm ourselves. And this is the basic thing which we don't understand. Rahu cannot do anything if we don't do it. Because Rahu is only a thought. Rahu is an illusion. Any other planet, like Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Venus, and uh, uh, Jupiter and Saturn, they are existing in our solar system. But Rahu and Ketu is only shadow between Earth and Moon. It is 180 degree apart and it is an imaginary planet. So how Rahu and Ketu will work is, 
it will use your energy it will use the energy of the house in which it is sitting it will use the energy of the planet with which it is sitting treat it as his own body and make you think that you need to wear this sunglass like i am wearing right now without any sunlight it's like midnight right now but i am wearing the sunglass this is what rahu makes you do it makes you wear a glass of an illusion and you commit mistakes rahu makes you commit mistakes because you don't know what you are doing so how can you control it how can you get rid of such uh, problems of rahu by knowing things so if you are in a bad phase in a bad time if you are undergoing rahu mahadasha you know you you you're believing that it is not going good all you need to understand is what rahu is trying to do if you are getting negative thoughts you should sit quietly and understand that it's like filtering it out what is right and what is wrong once you filter it out you act accordingly you you should understand which emotion which thought is making you obsessed if it is literally making you obsessed and you are going on the negative side of it it's the high time to come out of it because it is only you and only you and your act your karma that can change the effect of rahu from bad to good because any planet no matter what it is sitting in whatever house 6th house 8th house 12th house 3rd house 1st house 4th house came in the kendras or in the mul trikona it will give good and bad results as per your own karma because astrology is nothing but a karmic map it cannot be changed without simply wearing stones or or doing something really insane small remedies no astrology you are born with a particular chart just because it was your own karma it is like phalit this is the result of your own past life and what and this is the architecture laid down for your current life doesn't mean that the same thing is going to happen you will make that happen yes the architecture will be laid down for you there will be two or three paths given to you but which path you will choose is totally upon you so astrology is that guidance that prove that tells you hey this that path one is having lot of pebbles path two is smooth and clear bit long but smooth and clear and path three has lot of potholes in it take a car which is resistant to potholes take something to eat because the long journey is there in case of a smooth path and if you want to follow the path with uh, the spikes then you really need to wear such shoes which protects you this is what astrology is and this is what you need to understand if rahu is bad for you you need to understand that only knowledge and wisdom can combat rahu and that is why jupiter is the arch enemy of rahu if rahu is a gyan jupiter is gyan that is what is rahu jupiter will give you the wisdom what is jupiter learning so you need to learn from your own life it's like dukh mein hame seekhna padta hai kyunki dukh hi hame sikhata hai sukh ne kabhi kisi ko kuch nahi sikhaya so you need to learn what what life is throwing at you and and that learning you need to apply in your own life and once you do that karma rahu rahu's effect will dramatically change from negative to the positive and you won't even know about that so so if you really want to reap out benefits of rahu which is actually giving you all sorts of material pleasures at with which very ease quickly you will get quick material pleasures with rahu you really need to understand what jupiter is doing in your horoscope where jupiter is placed if it is aspecting rahu or if if because if jupiter is aspecting rahu rahu will aspect jupiter that's a fight between rahu and jupiter in horoscope that's a fight between gyan and agyan so you need to find out in your chart what is the actual fight going on in your horoscope what is the gyan and agyan battle and once you understand that battle you focus on the gyan part you try to remove that agyan part once you do that you will win your own battle because all of us are in a current battle with ourselves we are not fighting with anybody we are fighting with our own karma and it is our duty to understand how can i make my own karma 
a better better one so that i can make my life and the life around us beautiful one so to do that we really need some wisdom so from where that wisdom will come that wisdom will come from the position of jupiter you have to see where jupiter is placed what wisdom can jupiter bring from that particular place and that is actually the place from where rahu can be defeated for example if rahu is sitting in 5th house and jupiter is in 10th house this shows an obsession towards creativity an obsession towards children but jupiter is sitting in 10th house so a good planet sitting in 10th house means your karma should be good so in so you will get knowledge by teaching somebody or by preaching somebody or by coming in contact with people who preaches like a guru so if this is a combination then you should seek advice from a elderly person you should you should seek advice from people who have experience and once you in once you try to filter it out that okay i will not be obsessed i will try to understand then and there rahu comes down the negative effects of rahu comes down and the positive effects are start starts coming up it's very easy to control rahu as well as it is very difficult to control rahu it's totally up to you because rahu is rahu doesn't exist so it's like catching a shadow or or trying to fill a shadow if you try to get hold on a shadow you cannot because shadow doesn't exist all you need to do is to illuminate the room with light the shadow will automatically go away so try to illuminate your own life with knowledge wisdom and prosperity and this doing by doing this it may take some time it may take a while but it will happen and it will always help you get get, get rid of the negative aspects of the rahu so especially for the guys who are having a kal sarp yoga the best remedy is to strengthen jupiter in your horoscope from the position where jupiter is sitting doesn't mean you will wear a yellow sapphire or or a topaz for that no it's like trying to understand from where that wisdom that divine wisdom is coming and once that once you understand that divine wisdom source try to get nourished by that particular source get as much knowledge as possible and also try to understand that what position of rahu is causing damage and what position of rahu is really trying to create problems in your life so the best remedy of rahu is to giving power to its arch enemy jupiter because uh, you, you, this, this is a very interesting fact jupiter has its aspect of 5th 7th and 9th both rahu and ketu the only other planets apart from jupiter is having the same aspect 5 7 9 although the seventh aspect of rahu and ketu are basically aspecting themselves mutually because they are 180 degree apart they are always on the opposite sign rahu and ketu always face each other so they will always they are just single body it's 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 virtually disconnected but basically they are the same person so the major aspect of rahu is towards 5 5th and the 9th house 5th house is the house of mind so fifth aspect is the aspect of knowledge power to control the mind the obsession the literally pagalpan towards that particular thing and the ninth house is the wisdom ninth house is authority ninth house is luck ninth house is divine power divine blessings ninth house is the house of luck the best house in your uh, horoscope so by by ninth aspect if jupiter wants to bring in the divinity in you rahu wants the in rahu wants to be in charge of that divinity and that is why if jupiter is aspecting rahu with fifth drishti rahu aspects jupiter with ninth drishti and the vice versa so there is always a mutual battle between rahu and jupiter so if you really want to remove agyan from your life all you need to do is bring gyan and understand what's what's actually what's wrong it's very simple so guys i hope you like my video so if you really like my video do comment in youtube below and do subscribe subscribe my channel because more videos are coming soon thank you